Welcome back guys to Kids Coding Player on here today. We're doing a new project in Scratch. We're working on a basketball game on our Scratch. So basically the point of the game is you move around using the arrow keys, and then you click the space bar to throw the basketball and you try to get into the hoop. And then when you get into the hoop, you'll get score, as you can see. So I'm gonna play the project and show you guys how it works. So we also have some music in the background, so you move around using the cat. You can also jump using the cat. So you jump, as so you can see you make a score. And as you can see, if you shoot under the nets, you cannot make a score like that. So you can see that. As you can see, you can't make a score from under the nets. Make one more. There you go. So uh, it's pretty simple for a basketball game. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the game. So now let's get onto the coding. So start a new project. So new projects. Okay, so in our new project, we're going to be using the cat. So we're just going to rename it to cat. And then we rename the project to basketball. Basketball. And then right here we can uh, get some sprites. So right here we have the net sprite. So the hoop, we actually drew this. And we have to get our basketball sprite. So we're going to get our basketball right here. Basketball right here. We'll take the basketball. And then we'll resize it to 125. Because it's a little bit too small. And then we'll draw our hitbox. So our hitbox is just going to be a small uh, square. So we take out the outline as well. So no outline. And then we're just going to zoom in. Hold down shift so then get a perfect square. Oops, didn't have the tool selected. So hold down shift. So about that big, that should be good enough. So the hitbox is going to be like on top of the basketball hoop. So then it will be able to sh uh, detect if the basketball is going through and you'll score. And then next we go into our hoop. As you can see, our hoop is under the center thing because we want to put our hitbox about at this position. So then it will look like it's actually going through the hoop and scoring. And then for our basketball hoop, it's pretty simple to draw. We just have an outline of red, and then we use the 20 thickness of the line, and then we draw a line right there, and then right here we have three lines down, and then two lines across, and they're all white to make it look like a net. So here we have our basketball hoop. So yes, if you want to draw it, you can draw it, but it's also going to be in our Google Drive in the description below. And then next, we can rename this, let's rename it to hitbox, so our sprite's going to be hitbox. And then we can get our backdrop, so we got the brick wall backdrop, I think, wall, so we have the wall one, we're going to use this backdrop. Okay, so now we have all our assets into our game, let's get onto the coding. So inside our cat, we're going to first start with the movement of the cat. So when green flag is clicked, we are going to set the Y velocity, set Y velocity, we're going to make a new variable, so we're going to... Make a new variable, y velocity. It's for this cat only, uh, for the sprite only. Y, y velocity for the sprite only. So we have y velocity, we're going to set y velocity to 0. And then we're going to forever, in the forever loop, we're going to get change y velocity by the y, y position by the y velocity. So we're going to change the y by the y velocity. Like that, and then forever. Uh, we have that the forever, so next we're gonna get if then statement. So if so if the position is greater than negative 130, so negative 130 is about down here somewhere. So we want the cat to be somewhere down here. So we're gonna get if the position is greater than negative 130. So we're gonna get the y position. Oops, accidentally checked it. So we're gonna get the y position. And then if it's greater than negative 130, meaning it's in the air, so Gonna get if it's greater than position negative 130 over here. That means it's in the air. Then we're going to change the y velocity by negative two, meaning it will come back down. So we're gonna change the variable y velocity by negative two. And then next we are going to get an if then statement. If y velocity, uh, y position is less than negative uh, negative 130, meaning it's on the ground. So we're gonna get y position if it's less than negative 130. If it's like that, then we're going to set the y back to negative 130. Set y back to 130, negative 130. And then we're going to set the y, vo y velocity to 0. Next, we're going to do with the left and right movement. So we're going to, when green flag clicks, we're going to do this. When green flag clicked, we're going to get a forever. We're going to get forever. If, if then, so if the left arrow key is pressed, so if key left is pressed, left arrow key is pressed, then we're going to point direction of negative 90, point direction negative 90, and then next we're going to move 8 steps, 
So we're going to make the uh, cat move 8 steps, duplicate this, and then we're going to get a, if right arrow key is pressed, then we're going to change the direction to 90, point direction to 90, and move 8 steps. We'll keep that. Okay, so now we have all of this code. We're going to get onto the uh, left and right. We're going to make it look like he's walking, so we're going to get the one group like clicked. Go down here, we're going to get one group like clicked forever. If uh, left or right arrow key is pressed, so we can use the or, so or. If key left is being pressed or right, so we're going to get the key left arrow or duplicate the scatter right. So if either one of those are pressed, then we're going to do next costume wait 0.1 seconds, just so it'll look like it's walking. So we have the wait 0.1. And then next we have one more last bit of code, so we're going to go over here. Uh, we're going to do if up arrow key is pressed, when up is pressed, then we're going to if the y position is equal to negative 130, meaning the cat is going to be at negative 130. So we want the cat to be at negative 130, we're going to set it right here. Negative 130, so, so negative 130. So if the up arrow, uh, if the up arrow is pressed, and if y position is equal to one negative 130 so y position y position is equal to negative 130 we're gonna uh, set the y velocity our variable y velocity we're gonna set that to uh, set it to 20 so he's gonna have like jump 20 up in the air so we're gonna next see up here we can change the y by y velocity that means it'll be changing by 20 so Let's play our code. So right here, we can see the cat is moving, and of course, it's upside down. Uh, it's really simple to fix this. Just click this button, and then it'll just right be right side up. So, or you can use the set rotation style to left and right. So as you can see, our cat is moving. Jump. As you can see now, the cat can jump because we have our code in for the jumping physics as well. Okay, so now our cat is jumping. We can put onto our basketball. So add onto our basketball. Go into our basketball, we're going to get in a one green flag clicked. One green flag clicked, we're going to make a new variable and name it score. For all sprites, so we're going to set the score to zero. And then we're going to hide. We're going to hide the basketball in the beginning. And then only when the space bar is pressed, then we'll show the basketball. So when space bar is pressed, so when space key is pressed, we're going to do space. Then we're going to make a new variable and then we're going to name it made basket. So this is to detect if the ba uh, basketball has been made inside the basket. Made basket for the sprite only, so made basket for the sprite only. We're going to set made basket to no, so it's not going to be in the basket, obviously, in the beginning. And then we're going to set the direction of the cat, which is a new variable. So we're going to make a new variable, we're going to name it direction of cat. So direction of cat, it's for all sprites, so we're going to set direction of cat. And then we're, as soon as the game starts, as soon as you press the space bar, we're going to get the position of where the ball is, the direction of it, so then it will go in a certain direction. If you don't do this, the ball will only shoot towards one side. So we want to make it, make sure the ball can shoot to, towards the left and right. So we're going to get the this one, this block right here in sensing. So we're going to get the cat and then direction. So that's what we have to do. And then we're going to make it play the sound uh, pop. Or you can do basketball bounce, whatever. Uh, we're going to do pop whenever you shoot the ball, and then we're going to make the sprite go to the cat, so the ball will always go to the cat. And then after that, we're going to set the y velocity to 24, so that's going to be the y velocity of the ball. Set y velocity, y velocity, oh yeah, we have to make a new variable, oh yeah, I forgot. We have to make a new variable called y velocity for the sprite only, it's also for the sprite only, so... We have y velocity. I don't know why, but Scratch is sometimes laggy or glitchy. Sometimes it doesn't show up when I made the variable. I had to leave and come back. So here we have the y velocity variable. Um, again, it's for the sprite only. So we're going to set our y velocity. Y velocity, and then we're going to set it to 24. That's going to be it for, this, uh, for the basketball. And then we're going to point direction of the direction of the cat. So it's going to point in the direction of the direction of the cat right here, as you can see, we set the variable to that um, sensing block. So that sensing direction of the cat is now the variable, so we're going to just put the variable right there. And then we're going to show the ball. And then next, we're going to get a repeat until, so repeat until. Repeat until, and then we're going to 
get if the y position is less than negative 130. So if the y position y position is less than negative 130, meaning it's on the ground, then we're going to repeat until so if it's like that, then we're gonna get if else statement. So if so basically we're gonna repeat in the ball until it's on the ground. So we're gonna repeat this code in here until it's on the ground. So we're gonna do if direction of the cat is greater than zero. So if direction of the cat, if the direction of the cat is greater than zero, we're gonna change the x by 10. So this is basically making the ball move in a certain direction. So we're gonna change the uh, x by 10. Else we're gonna change the x by negative 10 because it'll be going towards the other way. So if the direction of the cat is towards the right side, meaning it's greater than zero, the ball is gonna shoot towards this side. If it's pointing towards this way, the ball will shoot this way. So that's the code for which way the ball has to shoot according to where the cat is pointing towards. And then next we're gonna obviously have to do set, make the ball shoot. So we're gonna have to do change the y position, change y, we're gonna change the y by the y, y velocity. So y velocity, and then we're gonna change the y velocity by negative two. So this is the uh, code to make it come back down. And then if else, we're gonna get if else uh, inside here, inside the repeat loop. So the repeat until, uh, so if it's the direction of the cat is greater than zero, we're also gonna make the ball like turn. So it's kind of like, in like real life, when you throw a basketball, it goes up and then comes back down in like a parabola pattern. So kind of like that. So we're gonna have to make it turn. So we're gonna do if it's greater than zero. So let's say the cat's pointing towards this way. Then we're going to turn six degrees towards the right side. Else, if it's facing this way, the cat's facing towards the left, we're going to turn six degrees towards the left. Like that. And then next, we're going to get if then statement. So if, so this is like for the hitbox. If um, touching, so we need two and statements. So and, and. So if the ball is touching the hitbox. So this is to detect if the ball should make a shot or not. So if it's touching the hitbox for one, oops, for the first one, hitbox, and then the second one, if the y velocity is less than zero, meaning it's negative two, which means it's falling. So we want the ball to only be able to shoot if it's coming over the hoop. So we're gonna do if it's less than zero, so we're gonna get zero, y velocity is less than zero, and we're going to make it made basket is equal to no because we want to make sure the basket the ball is not in the basket before we can make another one so we're going to make it no so made basket is equal to no because if it is then that means it'll score multiple times and then we're going to change the score by one right here change the score by one and then we're going to set made basket to yes because it's being made into the basket. So we're gonna make basket to yes. And then next we're gonna broadcast a message called made shot. So we're gonna new message made shot. So made shot and then we're gonna hide all this. So that's a lot of code. So here I'll show you guys the top and then go back to the bottom. So make sure you guys didn't mess up anything. So that's basically it for the ball. Now let's hop into the hoop. So let's go into our hoop code. Oh yeah, let me show you guys. The ball should be able to shoot. As you can see, the ball is shooting. So now we're gonna make the code for the hoop to fly all around. So we're gonna get a when green fly clicked. And we're going to forever. And then we're gonna glide one second. <clears throat> glide one second to pick around a negative 240. So negative 240 for the x to 240, 240, and then for the y we can do pick random negative 50 to 180. So so it's gonna be something like this. So it's gonna glide from somewhere, pick random right here to here for the x, and then for the y negative 50 is probably like right here to somewhere up here, 180 is like up here. So it's just gonna glide somewhere randomly, like randomly all around here. And then next we're gonna receive the message made shot. When I receive made shot, we're gonna uh, play a sound. So we're gonna start sound cheer. And then inside the cat right here, um, we're going to, when I receive the made shot, we're gonna make the cat say score for one second. So score, oops, um, exclamation mark, for one second. 
And then next, let's go to our hitbox. This is our last piece of code we need. It's pretty simple. It's for the hitbox, when group flag clicked, we just need to set the ghost effect. Set ghost effect to 100. So then it's not visible, but it's still, uh, you can still like, so the ball touches it, it'll still detect stuff, but if you hide it, it will not. So that's why you need to use the ghost effect. And then we're gonna use forever loop, and then we're gonna go to the hoop. So this hitbox will go to the hoop. Go to hoop. So forever, always follow the hoop. Okay, so here we have it. Uh, we can also add some music. Uh, what music? Let's just, I don't know, let's just get a forever loop. Go to sounds, let's just find some random music. I don't know. Whatever sound. Let's go to loops. Yeah, these are all the music. Okay, let's just use uh, cave, I guess. Sure, let's use that. And then start sound into low. Save our project and let's play our project now. So you see the cat is moving around, the basket also moves around. You shoot. See, as you can see, when I shoot it, it's a score. Oh, yeah, also let me show the variable score. Forgot to do that. Score. Okay, as you can see, the score is 2. Yeah, so as you can see, the game is working. A pretty simple basketball game. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Thank you guys all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.